Spring Bulk Day 14, boys. We're back at it again, okay? We got some syrup, some collagen, some creatine, two liquid IVs, and some more syrup for when we run out. We also got a coffee here. But, boys, just so you know, we already had breakfast. There was a lot of carbs in that as well. Tons of jelly. We had some bread, some freaking. We also had some different type of macros. We had butter for the fat, eggs for the protein. You guys get it. But for all you who are complaining about me drinking syrup, I just want to make you feel a little better. <clears throat> That's basically it, boys. We finished that one. Now we got another one. I'll get that too in a minute. But here's the thing. We're going to fill up this giant thermos. It's going to keep the water cool for the workout. And guys, if you don't have a thermos with you, I highly recommend you start using one because I would have it in warm water that tasted kind of like plastic. All right. Because I, I would have the, you know, those Gatorade bottles that you go. I have one of those and the water would always get warm and taste plasticky. But now that I got the thermos, man, water stays cold and it tastes pure. The chances that I actually drink all of this during the workout are very low. So that's why I'm gonna have some of it now with the liquid IV and then some of it later during the workout. But boys, today is chest day, okay? Today's freaking chest day. We're gonna hit some triceps too. Maybe if we have time, some shoulders. But again, the volume on chest day does have a lot of overlap with the volume on shoulder day if I'm doing side raises on both days. So for better recovery, I might just forego side raises, but who knows? We'll just see how I feel. Uh, my elbow and shoulder is feeling a little better because I know, you know, I was doing wrist curls for a while there that were like 105 pounds on the dumbbell and that kind of messed up my shoulder and elbow. Uh, but now I feel pretty much totally better. So I should be able to go heavy today without any sort of weird elbow type of inflammation. But in any case, the pump is gonna be immaculate. Obviously you can't, you can't not drink syrup before a workout and the pump be bad. You know what I'm saying? If you're drinking syrup, there's no way the pump's gonna be subpar. It's gonna be amazing. So with that said, Creatine, we're going to mix it up with the collagen as well. And, uh, you know, I'll down the coffee in a second. That's cup number two of the day, boys. Woo! That was actually really good. Dude. I don't even know what to freaking say. We're gonna go super heavy on the incline press. I wanna go for 245 and just see how many reps I can get. Now, is the form gonna be bad? Maybe, maybe. But I definitely wanna get the weight in my hands and you guys know I'm a firm believer in progressive overload. Now, obviously, um, progressive overload is doing the same form every week, but with better, you know, higher weight and more reps, right? But sometimes people can actually change the exercise variation without even realizing it. Like for example, they'll get their progressive overload by raising their butt on the, off of the bench. That's not real progressive overload, you know what I'm saying? That's just, you know, compensating with strength that isn't there and you won't actually know if you've made any gains from that. Whereas, uh, hold on, I gotta take a sip. Whereas if the form is the same every week, which I intend on it being the same, um, then that shouldn't be, that should be a total non-issue. So anyway, we're gonna go for 225 again on the Smith and a real 225, not just two plates, but I mean two plates and two tens because you guys realize the bar weighs 20, 20 pounds less or so. So you have to make up for that by adding two tens and then you could just, you know what I'm saying. But anyway, after that, we're gonna progressively overload. We're gonna do 60 pounds, 
each hand on the dumbbell fly. Um, see how that works out. And then, yeah, I mean, go heavy on the tricep push downs. You guys get it. You guys freaking get it. It's going to be hype. Okay. So we're going to chug this in three, two, one. I'll tell you what, collagen has awful mixability. Anyway. Woo! I am going to drink a little more syrup, but I will see you guys in the gym. All right, boys. So, we're starting off 25 on each side as the warm up. Right? That was a little mind muscle connection warm up. Let's throw a plate on. You got it. You got it. All right. So uh, <laughs> that was difficult. <laughs> so we low key maxed out. Didn't really mean to, but that is kind of like my perfect max. It felt lighter on the way down than I thought it would, and it felt heavier at this portion than I thought it would, which is kind of weird. But anyway, this is gonna be a new rep PR. Hopefully, I want to get about four reps minimum I hope I get five or six but we'll see I got six last week with five pounds less so if I could get six this week that'd mean there's some awesome progression going on anyway let's go Pass. Help. All right, boys, you gotta make sure we're adequately hydrated. And the uh, last set felt pretty good. At the end, I started doing not half reps necessarily, but kind of avoiding that bottom part of the range of motion because I knew I couldn't get any full reps after like the first two. So that was definitely a pretty big weight jump. But I'm thinking next week I'll be able to do that weight no problem. I'm a huge fan of doing a weight that you're not necessarily able to do perfectly and then kind of mastering it over time. And I think that that's probably going to be equally as effective as just doing the same exact technique with lighter weights, you know, and just keeping the technique consistent. I think that you're better off just getting the weight in your hands, getting your body ready to move heavier weight. So. We got five on each side. Let's go.
Yo, this is a full stack. Watch your brother wrap the full stack. seven years ago and uh dude my hands look big that's how skinny my arms were like my hands look giant because my arms are so lanky and skinny so i mean back then i must have been like under 110 pounds for sure and it was just funny because to me i look at myself and i still see a beginner i still see somebody who genuinely looks small and like i'm just you know, just big enough to maybe be on par with some other people who live. But I was looking at myself before and I'm like, oh my gosh. And it actually made me feel really proud of the progress I've made. And I, I would encourage all of you to do that if you're feeling crappy about your progress or even if you're not. Just look at some old videos for yourself, man, like really old. Like go way back. Don't just go a year back or two years. Go like five, six years back and just look at how far you've come, how much mass you've put on. You know, and then just be proud of yourself, man. Don't feel, don't beat yourself up. You're probably way bigger than you think you are. So, and even if you're not that big, objectively, you've made a ton of progress. So, be happy about that. I like pulled my hamstring like super aggressively um, when I was doing those dumbbell flies. I don't really know how. Sometimes I guess I just contract my hamstring super hard, but yeah, my hamstring just feels a little funny. Remember boys, it's a lot of it you're trying to the gym just has to do with the music you're listening to. If you're listening to the wrong song, it can completely throw you off for a sec, you know? wasn't the failure or like I got hold on hold on half of the people watching this might jump down my throat for that I know what it feels like when I'm in the right groove and when I hit a good stride in my set and there I just I didn't really hit a good stride at any point and I kind of wasn't just in the groove so you could have potentially seen me getting three more three four more reps there if I felt like I had the right mindset for it but was that too technical failure? Yeah, because I could not get any more reps in the same form. And so I did get, you know, if I want to nerd out about it, yeah, I got high levels of motor unit recruitment. But in terms of pure just feeling like the muscles like pretty much exhausted, no, I didn't reach that point whatsoever. But I'll tell you guys this, the shoulders do feel super good right now. Last week, the left hurt quite a bit. And, uh, 
you know, in a matter of like days, it recovered. And I would say a lot of it just has to do with recovery management. Like if your shoulder's hurting chronically, don't sleep on that shoulder, sleep on your other shoulder. Um, that really helped because for a while I would have like a month or two at a time where my shoulder would just be like in excruciating pain and I couldn't be intense. But once I figured out it was pretty much just if I tweak my shoulder in the gym, don't sleep on it, and it'll feel better in a couple days, it fixed everything, man. So, definitely recommend that approach for recovery management. And then also, like, avoid doing, like, an excessive amount of volume, especially in a movement that doesn't feel the best. Like, if you feel like you're misgrooving a lot and your shoulder feels a little bit funky, don't do more sets. Just move on, you know? But... And then just have more intensity with lower volume. Like, I have to do that with hack squats, right? or really any kind of squat. My, my lower back, for whatever reason, kind of freaks out whenever I do more than like one or two sets on hack squat. So I learned that I could just go as heavy and as hard as I want uh, for like one or two sets. But if, And as long as I do that, I'm good. But I have to make sure the intensity is dialed in or else I'm not gonna be getting in super high quality, you know, volume, right? And it doesn't matter what weight I do. Like if I try to do like a third set or fourth, then my low back just decides to like, Oh, you know so just keep the volume low keep the intensity high and if you have any joint issues that probably would help a little bit you know so <clears throat> pump is crazy super carved up definitely increased the chest bump a little bit again I should have posed with it but you know to be honest I'll just probably re-pump my chest before I go pose Up. Was Loki, you know, you can pose however you want in that most muscular variation. I usually grab my quads, but low key, bro, I was grabbing my cake. You know what I'm saying? To see a little better grip for that most muscular pose. Anyway, that was a little weird. We're gonna ignore that and that just didn't happen. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put these away. And I'm gonna do probably 25 to get a crazy pump head to pose. Oh my god. That burns like crazy. Okay. figured out a little technique, okay? To just go harder on side raises. Totally, I'd say probably the only helpful mental cue, like genuinely really helpful mental cue that I've heard in terms of intensity, right? 
go, and I just thought of this spontaneously. Go as high as you can, right? When you reach, you know, what you perceive to be failure, you can't, you know, do the same quality of reps in the same manner. From there, just kind of do a mechanical drop set, if you will. Just change the position of your body and allow yourself to get uh, more strength so you can be stronger and go as high as you can. Just mentally, just say, okay, I'm gonna go and put my hands as high as I can and then set a rep goal. So like for me, when I was done, I couldn't really get any more partials, whatever. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna get a lot of swing in here and I'm gonna go as high as I can with my hands for 10 reps. And that was really solid in terms of getting a pump. Now in terms of progress, I don't know. In terms of getting a pump, that was cool. So anyway, I'm gonna do one like fluff set, I guess, just to pump my chest back up. <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that, but we're gonna go do that and then go to the chest. Or sorry, go pose. All right, boys, we're getting a little freaking, you know, pump check in. Repumped the chest, pumped up the shoulders like crazy. And I honestly think that of all, out of all my muscle groups, I gotta say most improved so far is probably my calves. I don't know if you guys can see it, but yeah, I mean, my calves literally were absolutely nothing before. And I'm not saying they're huge now, but they're enough to notice, that's for certain. I hope you guys like the matching outfit today, a little black and white. Oh, my freaking delts are still burning like crazy right now.
Oh. All right. Alright boys, so we're gonna hit like one or two more poses. All I know is that the quads are staying pretty lean despite the fact that I'm in a literally massive surplus. So I'm not trying to be by the way guys, I don't think it's good. I much prefer bulking slowly to bulking quick but there, there's just been a lot of stupid meals lately and this is kind of a recurring theme on the channel, having really stupid meals all the time when I shouldn't but it's just the way it is man. It is what it is, Ka. All right, gosh, those vacuums are hard to hold. I will see you guys for whatever I eat. All right, boys, now I always say I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna eat and I never do for whatever reason. Usually it's just because I don't feel like recording while I eat dinner. But, boys, this time I do. And I gotta say, we have the stuffed peppers. They're a little cold now probably because I had them sitting here for a while while I was editing and with some freaking, I think that's melted mozzarella, broccoli, tons of beef, and I mean, this plate, guys, this plate has like heft to it, okay? This is a very rotund plate. And then we got three of these, and then we got three of these, and then we got one of these, and I'm not gonna eat this, but this is just, you know, you gotta have that for the scent, okay? So, anyway, boys, I hope you guys freaking enjoyed the chest day uh it went fantastically i was very surprised that i could do 25 on each side with <clears throat> two plates on each side which ended up being 255 pounds for a strict rep on the incline full range of motion i was very impressed with that but i wasn't trying to max out i just thought it might feel light so i just wanted to do a feeler rep but that feeler rep was literally like my max so Definitely excited to see um, how, what I can do in the future on that. I mean, I think definitely with three plates is within reason uh, during this bulk. And obviously, my goal is to get three plates on the overhead press on the Smith machine. So I think if I have kind of both of those goals, that they'll complement each other and they'll kind of help each other in the process. But guys, this is the leanest I've ever been. Today I weighed myself, sorry, leanest I've ever been at 170, okay? I didn't want to confuse anybody. But uh, at 170, I've never looked anything remotely resembling this, so I'm very excited. I believe I'm leaner than I was even at 155 um, on my last cut, so 
or sorry, not on my last cut, but I don't even know what I'm saying, boys. But I, I'm leaner. Oh yeah, okay. I'm leaner at 170 now than I was on my last cut at 155. That's what I meant. Not this cut, but the last one. So I explained that a little poorly because I got food on my mind, guys. Uh, other than that, though, I mean, it went excellently. I did chest flies on the, on the dumbbells with freaking 60s. That was nice. I want to definitely get, um, I'm thinking 65 or 60s for like six reps, maybe. We'll see what happens. Just a PR any kind of way, any PR we can get. On the incline, I want to try to get uh, 235 for six next week. I think that's my goal because obviously we could do 255. 20 pounds less should be feasible. Um, especially if you consider the strength increase from this week's session. I, I don't know. We'll see what happens, especially if I get enough carbs in. Uh, tricep pushdowns. I lowered the weight this week from the max stack plus like 10 or 5 or something like that because my form wasn't the best. Uh, but today the form is really good, just keeping it to the max stack. And um, I think I want to just keep I want to do the max stack maybe again next week or add 2.5 on top of that and then just slowly you know progressively overload from there side raises went extremely well pa shoulders were pain free uh, I got a crazy burn on that last set I was able to really get in my groove which is pretty interesting because uh, I you know I was talking about that earlier how it's important to you know stay in a good groove during your sets and not to kind of lose that uh, and you guys know what I mean, especially if you're a lifter. Like, it's hard to explain to a non-lifter because, to be honest, I don't even really know what I mean, but it's just kind of my perception of how I feel during the set, right? Like, if I feel like I've misgrooved a part of my body or I'm, part of me's out of place or I did something that was a little off, it'll throw me off for the whole set and the quality of it will go way down overall. The intensity goes way down. And um, in terms of just, I would say, pure feeling, right in terms of actual progression does it matter i don't know but in terms of the feeling the muscle the exhaustion the pump all that then it, it's definitely negated whenever i miss groove uh but i you know on that last set of side races like i said i was able to really stay in the groove and feel a massive pump to the point where whenever i was posing and i was hitting um you know a three-fourths or three-quarter arnold pose okay um i felt my side raises burning <laughs> I have food on my mind, you guys can tell. I felt my side belts burning like crazy when I hit that shot. Anyway, guys, you can tell I'm hungry. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you tomorrow for whatever we do tomorrow. But I'll tell you this, we're probably not going to be lifting tomorrow. We'll be hitting back day the day after. So I will see you guys tomorrow.